The startup Memphis Meats was one of the first to reveal a most unusual recipe, taking self-renewing cells from animals to grow meat in the lab. Would you eat it? The actual taste is spot on, because that's what it is. Uh, the texture is still co coming along because the muscle fibers aren't as long and structured. Arvind Gupta is the founder of Biotech Accelerator IndieBio, a program Memphis Meats went through. Gupta says it's still very expensive to grow meat, but that scientists are quickly making progress. Mark Post, uh, research from the Netherlands, who made the first uh, sort of patty, was about five years ago, and I think it cost him $300,000 to make that. Um, Memphis Meats made the first meatball for uh, $30,000, much cheaper, 10 times cheaper. Um, that was about two years ago. Today, they're making meat, duck, chicken for much cheaper than that even. Right now, the technical part needs to still be completely solved. About a quarter of IndieBio's portfolio is made up of food and ag companies. Half use plant-based materials to imitate meat, and the other half use animal cells to create it. And in this space, there are companies like Terramino, which also fall somewhere in between because they're using fungi, which isn't technically plant or animal, it's somewhere in between, and they are culturing it in hopes of making the first vegan-free salmon filet. They've begun by mixing with cream cheese for a dip. Let's see how it tastes. Mm, we're good. The fungi comes in these beautiful fibers that are very similar to animal muscle fibers of all types. It can be chicken, it can be pork, it can be beef, um, it can be all different types of seafoods. Seafood is the primary focus of another indie bio graduate, Finless Foods. The team is working on creating surimi, a fish cake used extensively in Asian cuisine. Inside this liquid nitrogen bank, cellular material from eight kinds of fish. With lab-grown food, animals aren't killed. I was blown away by how much it tasted like the ocean and like a fish. It's less for me about not killing animals, and it's more for this is a scalable architecture that is going to be able to provide protein for everyone on the planet in a way that's sustainable for the planet. Gupta expects lab-grown meat products to be on the market within a few years. But despite the environmental benefits, their success may ultimately come down to whether consumers think it tastes and feels like the real thing. Mark New, CGTN, San Francisco.